Hello, I'm Jim Jenkins from Applied Technology Institute. I'm the founder and president of the company. Wanted to introduce you to some video samples from our courses. These video samples are the instructors who actually teach the course, giving you a brief description of what the course is intended to cover, what's unique about the course, and then you actually get to see them present five or six slides as part of the course to get a feel for the level. Hello, I'm Jim Jenkins from Applied Technology Institute. I'm also one of the instructors for the Sonar Signal Processing course, and that's a three-day course that tries to give a fairly good coverage of the types of signal processing that are used in sonar systems, why you use it, including things like narrowband, broadband processing, active sonar processing. Uh, a unique thing about this course is in addition to giving the theory, we illustrate that with real examples where we code up the signal, analyze it using MATLAB so that you can see the effect of FFT resolution, of integration time. As a bonus to you, all of the software and scripts for that are on a CD that you bring home so you have a running start if you want to build prototype systems yourself. In this particular piece here, I'm going to discuss a few slides on active sonar just to give you a feel for the types of topics covered. An active sonar transmits energy that goes out, bounces off a target, and comes back. And normally you want to calculate the signal excess, which is how much signal to noise ratio you have relative to what's required to perform a certain task. So the signal excess is the source level minus the transmission loss out and back, or 2TL for monostatic sonar, plus the target strength, which is a measure of how well the target reflects energy, minus noise level, or in active sonar you also have reverberation, plus a directivity index or array gain of how the array helps enhance the signal to noise ratio and discriminate against both noise and reverberation. And then that signal to noise ratio is compared to the required signal to noise ratio or the detection threshold. Normally we say when the signal excess is positive, you make a detection, and when the signal excess is negative, less than zero, you don't have enough signal to noise ratio to make good solid detections. So this is the sonar equation shown differently of which parts the target defines. So you as a designer have no control over the target strength of, let's say, the submarine. And in fact, the submarine is going to do things to minimize its target strength by putting coatings on, changing the aspect when it can to the sonar to minimize the target strength. The ocean environment controls the transmission loss the noise level, the ambient noise level, and the reverberation scattering off of bottom and surface. You as a designer can normally control the source level, how much energy you put in the water, what array gain or directivity index you use to concentrate the energy, the ambient noise level by proper baffling and or to prevent self noise from overwhelming the background ambient, and the detection threshold. Normally they're combined, you get a performance prediction, you may iterate several times changing things like frequency, pulse length, and other sonar parameters to maximize performance for certain assumptions. This shows the two cases. Uh, noise limited is where either ambient or self noise is the dominant noise, and reverberation limited is when you're getting scattering from either the surface or the bottom or layers of fish in the ocean. Uh, as the signal comes back, it's reduced by transmission loss and may also have uh, attenuation at higher frequencies. This is an illustration of a target strength of submarine uh, where you have some, sort of a butterfly shape, but you have lots of fluctuations on it. The typical target strength is lower in the bow and stern directions of the submarine because that's the smallest projected area, and it's higher broadside if you're broadside to the beam of the submarine. Uh, another case that is of interest 
is not monostatic sonar where you use the same transmitter to receive, or at least a nearly co-located receiver, and a monostatic or bistatic sonar, you transmit with one location, one source, it reflects off and goes to a totally different location where there may be a passive receiver to detect the sonar return. These summarize the important parameters in the sonar equation and the factors that control how high the source level, the target strength, the reverberation are. You as the designer look to tweak those to get the best performance and then this gives the sonar equation when it's noise limited, what is the most important thing and certainly the choice of operating frequency is a very important parameter as part of the system's design.